Let me share my screen. <clears throat> cool. Welcome, everyone. Sashi, should I go ahead and get started? Yes, please go ahead. Great, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Um, welcome to the virtual team summit for the pilot phase teams in the, in the digital learning challenge. Uh, my name is Devin Krotman. Uh, I think a few of you have met me either virtually or during the last uh, team meeting that we did. So my name, uh, my role is sort of the program lead director, kind of oversee the day-to-day -day operations. Um, so I'll kick it off and go through a few slides before I hand it over to my colleague, Shashi, and then Monique, who will do the brunt of the answering of Q&A today. So um, first of all, um, Shashi, let's go back one slide. This is oh, no worries. I'm sorry. Okay. There we go. Yeah, so uh, a big congratulations to each one of you for making it to this phase. Um, you know, I've been around XPRIZE for almost seven years now. And um, if you make it past, you know, a judging round, you should give yourself a pat on the back. XPRIZES are uniquely difficult uh, and challenging. Uh, and no matter how far you end up in the competition, making it this far is kudos to you. So you should bask in that glory and really, you know, take some accomplishment in that. So um, before we get started on the agenda, I just wanna give a big shout out to um, our sponsor for this challenge, which is the, the Department of Education's Institute of Education Sciences. Uh, their partnership, their sponsorship and their leadership is really you know, this why we're here today and the, the genesis for why we're trying to modernize how we measure educational outcomes. So if, if not for them, we wouldn't be here today. And uh, we wanna thank them for incentivizing this competition and, moving us forward. So um, today we're going to go over the, the challenge timeline, more specifically from now until end of Q2 and really focus on the pilot phase. Shashi will talk about the, the really fun insurance requirement uh, and then she'll go over some feedback, generalized feedback on the technical submission and then Monique will deep dive into the pilot study phase itself and we'll do some Q&A at the end. So we'll go to the next slide. And then the next one. Okay, so this is a revamped timeline, really kind of honing in on from now until the end of the challenge, which is March, 2023. Um, I think what we wanna do really today is just kind of focus on the first four rows, if you will. So today is a virtual team summit. We're going over the initiation into the pilot phase. Uh, we'll talk about the insurance submission deadline at the end of this month. Um, and then, you know, when the pilot study submission will open in March and then when it will be closed in July and sort of ending that this phase as well. So we're, we're really just kind of focusing in on the next few months. Uh, the pilot phase will take us from now until the end of Q2 and then we'll go into the next demonstration phase, which will have our five finalist teams. So we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so some housekeeping items on our end um, for this, for, again, we want to congratulate you for making it to the pilot phase. We are not going to be doing a press release for this moment. Um, we're going to save that later for when we have our finalists later in the year. Um, but we would like to write a blog piece highlighting the 10 of you and posting this to our website sometime in late February, or early March. Um, so at your earliest convenience, uh, we know you have a lot on your plate in terms of the insurance requirement and getting ready for the pilot phase. Please email over your team's URL, if it's applicable, logo, if it's applicable, your updated city and or location, and a short paragraph kind of describing your team's background and its applicability to the challenge. And I know you sort of have provided this multiple times, but if there's a revamped version or something more streamlined that you want to provide, that'd be very helpful. Um, we'll use that to post to our website and also include it in the blog, sort of showcasing your work and, um, and why you're one of the pilot phase teams. So, I'll pause there uh, and sort of transition it over to my colleague, Shashi, who will talk about team insurance requirements. Thank you, Devin. 
Okay, hello everyone. I would be speaking to you about the insurance requirement and feedback received from the judges on your technical submission. In regards to the insurance requirement, there are three mandatory insurances that you need to procure. The first one is the liability insurance, uh, which will protect uh, your team against the claims for bodily injury of death, bodily injury or death or damage or to property which may arise out of team's participation in the challenge with a minimum coverage of $250,000 per occurrence and $500,000 in aggregate. Teams also need to make sure that they procure endorsements from your insurer to, the, to all the policies obtained for XPRIZE Foundation Inc. and Institute of Educational Sciences. As an additional insured with waivers of subrogation, workers' compensation insurance is the next one which we need to take care of in case if you have um, employees in your team or in your team or organizations. Uh, teams need to make sure that the insurance uh, requirement is as per the applicable laws of the nation, state, territory or province having jurisdiction over your team's employees with limits sufficiently to cover the team's potential liability to its employees in connection with the team's participation in this challenge. In the, uh, as I said, mentioned earlier, in case if a team has no employees, then the workers' compensation insurance is not required. And in case if any team has volunteers working with them, then they need to procure uh, volunteers' health and accidental insurance, which would be sufficient to cover any kind of injuries that may occur during the, uh, during the timeline of this challenge. The last one, which is a mandatory insurance, is the automobile insurance. If your team owns, leases, or operates an automobile in connection with the, the participation in this challenge, then team needs to procure uh, the automobile insurance policy with limits sufficiently to cover team's potential liability for bodily injury, property damage, and the uh, property damage to third parties. Uh, these are the three which are mandatory insurance. Apart from that, we, we would recommend procuring uh, umbrella liability insurance uh, coverage with limits uh, no less than about $2 million, but it is not a mandatory requirement. For full information on the insurance requirement, we would recommend please check out the Exhibit C of the competitor's agreement. Now, team, now, all the insurance policies that you procure needs to be from the insurer, which is uh, rated by AM Best, not less than A7 and above. In case if it's a uh, workers' compens, in case of workers' compensation insurance, uh, the insurance needs to be the insurer needs to be approved by the state and government approved programs. If the insurance insurer is not rated by AM Best then evidence supporting the insurance financial strength needs to be provided, which will be subjected to approval by XPRIZE. All the insurance policies should be valid for the entire challenge timeline, and all insurance policies are due by February 28, 2022, 11 a.m. Pacific time. You need to submit your uh, insurance certificate along with the uh, compliance certificate form to digital learning at xprice.org. Uh, we would be sharing with you a generalized feedback uh, received from the judges on your technical submission to foster learning and to be clear uh, of our expectations. The feedback are both for all the teams who were eliminated as well as the teams who are moving forward in the competition. Most of the team submission lacked information on randomized control trial and replication plan, plan of the experiment in both pilot study and the demonstrations, demonstration phases of the competition. Information on how the study outcome aligns with your principles were missing. Many teams did not explain the usability study and did not provide information on pre-registration of experiments and scaling of their solutions. We would like to inform you that IRB approval on your study is mandatory and your solution needs to be a credible research platform. Teams need to add student consent to the platform whose data is being used for the study. 
please make a note of all these requirement and make sure you incorporate all these details in your next submission. Thank you. I would like to request Pony to talk to you about the pilot study phase requirement. Hey, really, really quick before we hand it over to Monique. Uh, thank you, Shashi. A few things on the insurance requirements. Uh, we know they're very uh, rooted in legalese. So uh, if you have any questions about that, uh, please let us know. We can route that to our legal team. We are not lawyers. Um, the insurance requirements are applicable across all XPRIZE competitions, no matter what they are. Um, so we appreciate everyone's patience. And we know a few teams have sent that in already. So thank you for that. In terms of the feedback, um, XPRIZE usually doesn't even provide, it really varies competition to competition uh, in terms of providing feedback after each phase. Um, but we felt talking to the judges that providing generalized feedback uh, would help hone the, the solutions for the 10 teams going forward. So again, to, to Shashi's point, not all this feedback will be applicable to you, but it was applicable to all the teams that submitted to technical submission. And it's just something to kind of weigh uh, if it does apply to you as you go forward. So thank you. Uh, Monique, it's all yours. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. First of all, I'd like to join my colleagues in congratulating you all for making it thus far. Uh, I'm really excited, I'm a math nerd, so I'm really anxious to get, get to know you all and the work that you're gonna be doing. So I wanna take a moment to uh, reiterate and, and break down uh, what the pilot phase will look like. There were a lot of questions and great questions I may add, but I want to make sure that we are all on the same page about what are the expectations in this phase. So uh, overall, you need to conduct a one month minimum study um, in an education setting. There are details in the guidelines and rules and regulations about how we define that education setting. So please make sure that you are uh, referring to those documents as they are your best guide for how to engage in our competition. Um, so you'll conduct your one month long study, your pilot study, and you will also conduct a replication with at least one learner demographic. So your, one, your, your initial study, let's say it lasts for 30 days for, for ease of you know, uh, this e example. So if I start my study on March 1st and I conclude on March 30th, um, I will have 30 days from March 30th to launch my replication study with a specific learner demographic. So in that pilot study, I might sample all the kids or, you know, may not have a sampling, you know, uh, uh, discriminant to pilot initially. But when I do my replication study, I might want to focus on ELL learners, or I want to focus on uh, students who are remote and think about, you know, um, possibly, you know, what it may take to conduct that, that work within the February 2022 to July 2022 timeframe. So you have a lot of time, but not a lot of time to really make sure that you have all your ducks in a row regarding IRB. You might need to conduct MOUs with um, your uh, institutions. Um, so we give enough time to make sure that you have all the, your ducks in a row to can carry out these two studies. So when you complete your studies and it's time to submit your, your, your information in July, uh, you will submit a technical report of your pilot. Uh, the judges and I are working on the guidelines to to construct that report. I wouldn't think of it as like a, a in-depth technical report, but some explanation and justification and maybe an executive summary of what you completed. The raw data generated by the study, uh, reports of the data and a set of analyses using the raw data. Again, more details on what this looks like will be coming out uh, soon because the judges and I were gonna make sure that you know we have clear expectations and outlines of what we mean by this. Um, and of course, you can always refer to the rules and regulations linked here, but we will also take advantage of the Slack channel to dump all of your resources there. So if you're not on Slack yet, please reach out to Shashi or digitallearning at xprize.org so we can get you linked into the Slack channel. Next slide, please. Thank you. So more information about the pilot phase study, um, you know, Again, we wanna make sure that it is conducted in a US setting. Um, it should reflect to the best extent possible the diversity of the students and characteristics of the American education system. Um, if you are studying students in the public education system, you know, be mindful of you know, the representation of those students and you know, perhaps you know, if they attend Title I schools, what does that mean and how do those students navigate those, um, those systems? Um, if you are ex 
interested in doing charter schools or private schools, also understanding the policies and how those policies may impact how student navigates or learns in those environments is very critical to the work that you'll be doing. Next, you wanna demonstrate the ability of the platform to collect and analyze data. This is extremely crucial because this is what IES is looking for. They're looking for these organizations um, who are developing tools um, that have the capacity to not only collect and analyze data, but also, you know, uh, tell us about the outcomes that were achieved for those students and what factors led to those uh, 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 outcomes. The study should be pre-registered using an open science platform. I'm going to uh, tap into my network to find a professional to walk you through this process. How do I register my study on an open science platform? What is the information that we need to, to provide that information? Um, because this is a requirement of the study. So I wanna make sure that you all have the know-how to do so. Um, and primary outcome measures should include student outcomes sensitive to the performance change. On the next slide, we'll talk about what exactly those uh, required data points will be, but I just want to point out that there are specified required data points that you have to submit in July. And then finally, consistent with the standards for excellence in education research or the SEER principles, I'm going to also tap an expert to come in and talk to you about the SEER principles so that when you are writing up your reports or conducting your study, you can speak to um, these um, principles and um, demonstrate your knowledge and, expect, uh, and, and demonstrate that you can meet the expectations of this aspect of the competition. I see we have a Caleb. I'm an ambassador for the Center for Open Science and would be happy to serve as a Awesome. So we can use the resources within our own community to do that. Phenomenal. So Caleb, I will be in touch with you. Let me take down your name. I'll be in touch with you so we can uh, chat offline about what that looks like and how we can get you connected as a resource. Appreciate it. Next slide. And I'll get to your Q&A questions at the end, but please drop them in the, uh, the Q&A function. So here are the pilot phase minimum data requirements. So the study must collect the following data points, individual student identification. Um, obviously you should um, make sure that that uh, is um, a not or, or a confidential or anonymous. You don't want to share any student names with us or any student personal identified information. If you can, um, well, you should please apply a case ID or some unique identifier to the students. Um, any dem dem demographic data and information on student characteristics that impact the education outcomes. Um, you know, if you're collecting information on student race, you have to have a uh, justifiable reason as to why you're collecting that information and why that specific characteristic is important to the educational outcomes, not just to, you know, hey, we're we're studying you know, differences between black and white students, but what is the uh, scientific justification and reasoning for that? Um, the student baseline measure, so that could be standardized test scores, that could be math reading scores, it can be performance on a uh, specific uh, uh, quiz. So whatever you are trying to uh, uh, measure or track, make sure that you have your baseline and your post-study outcomes. Um, the baseline and outcomes measures must be measured using the same units, of course, consistency and making sure that we are operating on the same scale between your, your, um, your baseline and outcome measures is important. Student attrition, you know, we're, we're, you know, this happens. We are living in unprecedented times, um, but we also know that people are constantly moving in and through and out of system. So oh, can you go back, please? There you go. Um, so just make sure that you are tracking that if you are, um, you know, if you, you know, enroll 400 students in your study and 50% uh, drop or for some reason, you know, the school closes or, you know, uh, goes to remote, make sure that that you, you track that and how that impacts the engagement in your study. And then process data, describing how students interact with educational materials and activities. This may be the data that you're getting through your platforms. It, Ideally, this would be the information that you're getting through your platform. So if they are, um, uh, you know, uh, demonstrating proficiency um, across a certain number of um, uh, learning paths or uh, activities, you know, you want to track that. If they are, you know, maybe not so consistent in their performance, you want to track that too. Um, it may be other behaviors such as, you know, how long are they spending time doing certain activities. So whatever your platform is designed to do, this is kind of where it shines in this kind of way of showing us how you're collecting data, how you're analyzing it, and how you're interpreting the data. Um, and we will, we will work with our 
IT team to make sure that there is a portal for you to submit all of your pilot phase uh, performance information to our POP website. Next slide, please. Great. As our uh, colleague Shashi mentioned earlier before, IRB approval is required. You know, we're working with uh, vulnerable populations, students, minors, and possibly other special populations. So we wanna make sure that we have a understanding that IRB review is required. Um, so for certain, for certain teams, you may, you know, think that, you know, full review is not necessary understood, you might do expedited or exempt. We just wanna make sure that there's an independent accredited IRB agency or academic institution who is reviewing your research proposals, who is uh, asking the important questions that need to be asked, requiring the important documentation that is required, and that you are, are, are getting documentation to protect the work that you're doing and protect the students who are engaged in your studies. So we would ask that you submit that documentation by June 1st, um, and you'll send that into our digital learning website. If you have any questions or if you, you know, if you're not sure about how to go about it or you need recommendations on independent IRB agencies, we'll be happy to field those questions. So this is a great opportunity for you to utilize Slack and kind of share the agencies that you might be using. This is a, a community of learning, but also a competition. So, you know, as best as you put your foot forward, I think it will make everybody else better. So it'll be really great if we can kind of uh, take that um, perspective uh, for the next year in this competition. Next slide. I think this is it. Okay, great. We're in the Q&A section of the presentation. So I'm going to jump right in and read Kristen's cute question. Can the replication study overlap with the pilot study or occur simultaneously? I would say, I would say it depends, right? So how, how you define occur simultaneously, I would say you need to wrap up the pilot before you start the replication. Do you need to take the full 30 day window? No, you can kind of start that you know, immediately. If you wanna run multiple replications, those can overlap simultaneously. But I think that the goal of this competition was to demonstrate that we have reproducible studies that can occur within 60 days. So we really wanna test that assumption. So keeping that 30 day window is important to making sure that our assumptions uh, can be, um, uh, analyze across the, each team, if that makes sense. And Devin, feel free to jump in if, if there's um, any anything I missed, but that is, that's essentially the goal of this competition. Can we create reproducible rapid studies in a 60 day window? Um, Anonymous says one small challenge we were, yeah, no problem. Thank you, Kristen. One small challenge we were running into in the technical submission phase is that school closed May, June and, and where we're working and the last month is reserved for exams. So we only have February through April. I'm curious how others are handling this or running into this challenge. Great point. So this um, this is information that we can take back to our sponsor and the judges and you know determine you know how we wanna possibly navigate some of this timeline issues. Um, so I'll take that information and share it back with my colleagues and we will get back to you. If you can send an email, um, I know you're anonymous and that's fine, but if you can send us an email with your you know, plans and some of the issues that you think you may run into, please do so. Yeah, and to build off Monique's point, I think um, this is really interesting to see how other teams might be approaching this. So encouraging you to use the Slack channel to kind of share these ideas as much as you feel comfortable. Uh, again, it is a competition, but as much as you all feel comfortable sharing these kind of collaboration ideas, that would be helpful. Okay. So I think I think we should go back to the judges and our, our sponsor, because I think that there, if, if the concurrency thing doesn't work out, you know, what are the options in terms of making sure that the, we have enough time to get these studies in? So let us, let us go back to our, 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 um, our, our colleagues and make sure that we have an answer for you. Um, thank you. And please send us an email. If, if you are impacted by that, please send us an email so we can go and say, hey, we have a number of teams who have questions about this. How can we um, support them? Okay, great. Thank you, Lauren. So back to the concurrent thing. And I think Monique, Shashi, and I can talk a little bit offline with the sponsor. So if we're not, you know, would we need to build in an extra month or two in order to get to that demonstration phase and possibly, okay. We can take a look at the timeline and have that conversation. I'm, I'm just wondering, yeah. I'm I just think kind of it, it's up. more so 
about the school and their timeline, right? More than ours. So if schools are ending in May and early June, then we were, I mean, we picked these teams. So in the, the in you know, the areas that they want to work in. So we, we should probably just have a conversation about, you know, can they be concurrent? Right. And, and how much time should pass before a replication, you know, starts? So can you start your pilot and then two weeks later, you know, you're still running a month long pilot, but, you know, maybe two weeks pass and you can initiate your replication. I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, because I don't even know if this isn't like to Ben's point. I just I don't even know if this is an extension que a question, because if we extend, I mean, schools don't pick up again until September. Right. And that that does, yeah. that's a little bit too long within this timeline. So, yeah. So. Yeah, we will we will check in with I think you should consider April. Okay. Okay. Thank you all for your feedback. We will take that to our, our sponsor and colleagues and we we should have an answer for you pretty soon because as you know, we'll be we are initiating this phase right now. Um, are there any other questions? I got the questions on the timeline. Oh, I did want to mention um Caleb, I will be reach can you please reach out and send an email to digital learning um, to talk about SEER? principles um, or open study. I believe it was open study. Um, guest uh, office office hours, sorry. I said guest speakers, office hours. Um, I will be sending through the Slack channel my monthly availability. Just say, hey, every Wednesday at this time, I'm available for drop-ins if you want to chat. Just send me a message on Slack and I'll send out the Zoom link um, to provide one-on-one -on -one or group um, check-ins and support. Um, so that we, you know, we're just making sure that we are connected and if there are any bumps or hiccups along the way arise, that is your opportunity to kind of just drop in and just give an update. Um, best form of communication moving forward is Slack for anything for the good of the group, things that will make all of us better, things that would be good to share ideas on IRB agencies or if you're looking for particular software, or whatever, you know, you can feel free to ask the group about that. Emails um, per, for meeting scheduling, anything concerning your group and your experience in the competition. Shashi is your community lead, so she will be sending out information. So make sure as your team lead, you're sharing that information with your entire group so that they are informed on the updates and, and um, changes to the competition. And I conclude. <laughs> Yeah, so we're, you know, um, we're right about at the half hour mark. Um, oh, I'm sorry, there was one more question from Christina. Uh, for the demonstration phase, the only difference is that you have to replicate, uh, I believe it's five replications across three different learner demographics. So you start the pilot phase, the minimum 30 day window or, or maximum 30 day window to launch your replications. And you'll have to do it five times uh, uh, for at least three groups. And that will be concluding in March of 2023. So their minimum applies to the pilot length. The maximum applies to the duration between the pilot and the launch, the pilot conclusion and the launch of the replication. The maximum is 30 days to launch the replication. The minimum pilot length is 30 days. Okay, Ben said, can you share other examples about demographic and student characteristic variables that might be included? I agree that race is potentially problematic. Other examples that might be better. Um, you know, not that race is problematic, but it has to be tied to a, uh, you know, a theory. It has to be tied to some type of, um, you know, uh, you know, need related to the um, interventions that you're carrying out. But I would say other characteristics could include, um, you know, reading level it can include um you know if they are um a a student who is participating in a choice program as opposed to attending like their neighborhood schools um it could also be students who are um uh uh consider gifted or students who are um, athletes. So there's, you know, tons of, you know, ways that you can slice and dice or, or think about how you want to characterize your samples to, you know, conduct your RCT or QEDs. Um, but whatever you decide, we want to make sure that it is rooted in some basis that, you know, you're trying to address an outcome that students 
who hold these identities or characteristics will benefit from in X, Y, Z way. And again, we can use we can use our weekly, you know, um, office hours, or we can, you know, just chat offline about this. I'm happy to review anything that you put forth before the IRB, um, just so that we can, you know, just keep transparency amongst all of us, and we can support you. All right. Well, actually, so there's a there's a question in the chat uh, that just popped up. Yes, so the, uh, but what we mean a minimum of 30 days is from the time where you collect your baseline and you collect your outcomes. So there might be some activities going on after you collect your baseline um, and um, outcomes data, but that's the window of time that we're looking at, baseline to outcomes, baseline to outcomes. That, that should be 30 days minimum. Yes, yep, between pre and post tests, if that's how you're framing, um, it, it would be, yep, your baseline and your outcomes. And it could be 60 days too, like, you know, again, a minimum of 30 days. Uh, so just wanna make, make that clear that your, your, your study can run as long as you need to, but make sure that you have enough time to replicate and, you know, conduct all the other activities to turn in your work on time. Okay, one more question. Our project, okay, I think it's two more questions. Oh yes, statistical, yes. So power analysis, there was a question that came up about um, uh, do we need to conduct this for both the experiment and the replication or combine? The answer is separate. So you wanna treat each of these studies as unique independent, but obviously you are you know, replicating a, a pilot. So uh, the short answer is yes, conduct your uh, sample and power analyses independently of each other. So analysis for pilot, analysis for replication. And one more, regarding pre-registration, our project is about crowdsourcing teachers as research to develop their own projects and then replicate them with other teachers. What does pre-registration mean in this case? So I believe the, the pre-registration is about transparency. It's about sharing your ideas in a, um, a uh, what's it called, like a, a, a digital uh, space where other researchers are trying to either replicate or see kind of what's the, um, the trends in the research around certain topics. So that's what it means to register your study so that people can read it, people can critique it, people can provide, you know, um, you know questions or anything like that. I hope that answered the question, but um, it really is just more so like, you know, IES wanting transparency and wanting other researchers to know what's being conducted so that if they want to replicate, there's a, there's a resource to do so. All right, so how did I do? <laughs> how do we do? Uh, okay, so it says, uh, one, there's another question coming in. All right, no problem, Ben. I'm uh, unable to see the questions are being sent in the chat. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so I mean, we'll send ahead. out an entire Zoom rec recording of this conversation uh, so everyone can rewatch it and uh, answer all the questions that Monique answered. So um, hopefully that helps with everything. Phenomenal. Thank you all so much. You've answered amazing questions. You've done amazing work thus far. We cannot wait to see the amazing work that you will do. Feel free to reach out to us via Slack or email if you need anything. We will be sending the recording um, and the um, uh, uh, there'll, there'll be like a little visual I'll be sharing out with you about kind of how to visualize or, or make sense of this funky timeline that we're working on. But it, you know, we will get back to you on whether or not the sponsor is willing to consider making a, uh, changes to the timeline to support you and also in recognition of schools' timelines. Um, and can you share the list of the te ten teams with us? How do you feel yeah. about that? I think we can do that. Um, so we can send that out later today or tomorrow. Um, and then we, we just ask that, you know, you don't publicly make an announcement of this yet. We want to try to get this blog up and running, but uh, we're certainly happy to share uh, the names of uh, your peers that are moving forward. So, yeah. So your to-do list teams, as uh, uh, Devin mentioned, is to send over that information to us so that we can write that really nice blog piece about you and the work that you're doing. Um, 
Shashi is asking for you to submit your um, insurance documentations. And I am asking you to take a look at your um, rules and regulations, take a look at your own proposals. And if there are any questions that you have, utilize that Slack channel. Great. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Monique. Thank you. Thank you, team. Thanks. Thanks.